Hey, Defenders, welcome back. Today, we're setting up an interesting tool within the world of cybersecurity, and that is called a honeypot. Now, I've covered a honeypot in the past called teapot, but I recently stumbled upon this new honeypot called Belzebub, I think. Hopefully, I am pronouncing that right, although I think I do have a track record for mispronouncing tools because I'm not even sure I pronounce Wazoo correctly. I'm pretty sure it's Wazub. So I guess you can say at least I'm uh, consistent. If you're not already familiar with a honeypot, a honeypot is a type of decoy system or a server designed to lure in attackers. So it pretends to be a vulnerable target so you can safely observe what people do when they try to break in. You can gather additional intelligence, study their behavior, all without putting your real assets at risk. And what makes this Belzebub honeypot interesting in particular is that it supports AI slash LLM support. So meaning that instead of fixed static responses, you can plug it into a large language model like OpenAI, which we'll cover in this video, so that the honeypot can simulate more realistic behavior. So it pretends to be a real system in ways that are more dynamic, uh, responding, hey, you know, quote unquote, a little more smartly rather than just echoing canned out script. So in this video, I'll show you step by step of how to install Belzebub via uh, Docker. I'm going to deploy it via Docker. There are a few other different ways to deploy it, such as you can use a Go compiler, you can deploy it via Kubernetes. But in this example, I'm going to work through Docker. In my opinion, I think it's the easiest way to get up and running with this honeypot. So let's go ahead and jump into it. And all right, so on my endpoint here, I already have Docker installed. If I do Docker PS, we see that Docker is currently installed and running. So I'm first going to CD into my op directory, and then we're going to go ahead and clone the directory, or sorry, the repository of Belzebub here. So I'm going to go ahead and do clone. I'm going to clone that in, and then I'm going to CD into the directory here. You'll notice that if we open up the Docker Compose file, You'll notice that we need to actually, they're not providing a public image. I don't know if maybe they will in the future. To be honest, I haven't spent too much time with this tool. So do drop something along in the comments if I am incorrect about something. But so what we'll just need to do is just go ahead and do a uh, Docker Compose build. And this is going to locally build the image for me that we'll use for the containers or one container really. So while that's building, out of the box, there are some protocols that are already configured for us. And we'll take a look at that here in a sec. But you'll notice that there's a configuration slash services directory. And what makes Belzepub, at least in my opinion, even more user-friendly, you can configure various honeypots very easily via these YAML files. So here they're simulating an MCP server. We can also simulate a web server via HTTP that's being served over HTTP and simulates like a WordPress. You can get really customizable with all this. We'll, we'll kind of take a look at some of this. Um, and again, what makes me a big fan of this project is just how customizable it can be. You can make your own web pages and it's really easy to also deploy. I'm going to focus mostly on SSH and simulating like an attacker is successfully connecting to your server and then uh, how we can capture those commands. And what's really cool here is you'll see that this plugin here with the LLM provider and here they're supporting OpenAI. They also do support Alamo. So if you're running a local model, you can also connect it there as well. And then if we scroll down a little bit further too, you can also give it custom prompts, which is really cool. So the LLM is going to not only take whatever the attacker typed into the CLI, but it's also going to consider your prompt. So you can give it specific instructions on how you may want it to format back the response that it provides. So let's go ahead and actually jump into that. So let me clear this out. So if I LSS out here, you'll see that we have our configurations directory. So if I go into there, you'll notice that there is a Belzebub.yaml which for now, I'm just going to leave this as default. I will revisit this here in, a set, here in a bit because we will want to send these events to our seam stack and collect these via Wazoo as well. So we'll take a look at that here in a bit. But what I want to focus on right now is the services directory. So here you'll see our various YAML files. So these are is what replicates various vulnerable honeypot services. Here we see one for port 3306. That's probably MySQL, I would guess. Yeah, MySQL. So simulating a vulnerable MySQL server. 
was pretty cool as well. So I'm going to open up the SSH for 2222. And I am going to be using OpenAI. So I will need to put my secret key here. But what I'm also going to add is my prompt, which we saw within the within the repo. So here I'm just saying you'll act as a human, Ubuntu Linux terminal, the user will type commands, etc. The user will type commands and you are to reply with what the terminal should show. Your responses must be contained within a single code block. So you can get pretty specific with this, right? This is very elementary, but having the flexibility to build your own prompt is really cool. And then I'll also add in my API key here for OpenAI. All right, and with that added, I will now CD back two directories here, back into the Beelzebub. And we're gonna go ahead and launch the Beelzebub honeypot. But first, actually, what I actually need to do first is I want to add, since it says a honeypot, and for this instance, I'm just gonna expose it to the public internet. And what I wanna do here is add my IP address. And I'm just gonna add that as any there so I can connect to all of these services. All right, cool. So that's going to be good. So I'll be able to uh, simulate some of these attacks here. And what I'm going to go ahead and do is now that I'm ready to start the Beelzebub application, I'm going to go ahead and say docker compose up dash D. And you'll notice we have an error here. Actually, and before we get to the error, we do have two warnings. So you could set these as a environment variable within an EMV file if you want. I've just hard coded them into the YAML files, uh, as you just saw earlier. So I'm going to disregard this warning. You do notice, though, that Docker is telling us, hey, I can't start the application. If I do a Docker PS, we see nothing running because something's already listening on port 22, which is true. My SSH se session of what you're seeing here, how I've connected to the endpoint, is on port 22. So that's likely going to be the case for you as well, unless you've changed your default SSH port. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is within the Docker Compose file, I'm just going to remove that entry. Now, if I do Docker Compose up dash D, we now see Beelzebub starting up. And if I do a Docker PS to get the container ID, and then let me just go ahead and paste that in there and do dash dash follow. And we should see our services start up and running. So there's also an MCP server. I haven't played around with this one, but that's pretty interesting, especially with how popular MCPs are, are getting and MCP level honeypots, pretty interesting. You can see we have a WordPress on port 80, Apache on port 22, or sorry, on port 8080. We have our SSH on 2222 and then MySQL on 3306. So uh, let's see what this looks like. So I'm going to go ahead. Oh, and one thing I didn't touch on actually is within, if I go into the services and then particularly the SSH that we set, you'll notice these passwords. So these are valid passwords that I could use as the root user. So this just gets into how uh, customizable this honeypot really is. I can set the server name. I can simulate different SSH versions. I can set different default passwords. So any of these default passwords that I try to log in on uh, via SSH on port 2222 will be applicable and will grant me access to the honeypot. So you can customize that uh, if you'd like there as well. So I'll go ahead and do my Docker logs and let me also, what I'm going to do is clone this guy. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to change my SSH port to 2222. And then my root user is correct. And then I'm going to change my password to root since that was a valid password that we just saw within the YAML file. So now if I connect here, what we should see, so fingerprint has changed, that's expected. We can see it's presenting us the new, it's listening on the new port. And sure enough, I can now connect. And here I am simulating on an Ubuntu server. And here within our logs here, so our uh, container logs here are being outputted via this command here, this Docker logs, and you provide the container name with a dash dash follow. And we can see, sure enough, that user root. And here is my public IP address. And you can see that we just started a new H terminal session. All right, pretty cool. So what's happening here? So if I do like a who am I, I get back a user, and then we're also logging those commands that are ran. So here you can see who am I. Maybe I want to run some combined commands. 
So I get a uname, ls slash etc to see what's in the etc directory, and then also who am I. And you'll notice that this is taking a little longer because what's happening is now this command is being sent to our large language model, in this case, OpenAI, it's API, and then it's going to respond back with what it, generates. what it generates. What's also cool too, is that the model will remember. So if I do say, for example, I generate a file here, test.txt. So this would be sending it to the model and the model would have created it. And now if I wanted to list the contents of this file, you'll see that it actually responds back with what the contents would have been. If I ls this out, it's actually keeping track of that file actually exists. And if we go back into our logs, let me get this guy running again. You'll see all the commands that we're running as well. So we're now logging every quote unquote malicious attempt. For example, here's our wget out here. And then they tried to download malware.sh file and then try to execute that file. We're getting that command there. I mentioned how there is also a browser, right? So. So if within my browser here, I think it was just listening over HTTP. So if I connect to that within my browser, you see that we get a hello from WordPress. And here you can see my actual web request being captured within the logs. So we've got Beelzebub running and installed. However, the logging isn't necessarily user-friendly, especially when it comes to our Seam stack, right? So what we would want to do is, since these logs are in JSON, the Wazoo agent is a great for collecting JSON formatted logs and sending those into the Wazoo manager. So we're gonna go ahead and do just that. But first, we need to actually configure the logging to log to a log file. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop the application. And I'm gonna go ahead and go into the configurations directory and open up the Beelzebub.yaml file. And then I'm going to go ahead and point to a logs path of where I want my logs to be written to. And I'm just going to go the full path and paste that within there. So we'll write our JSON logs that we were seeing with our container. The log formatting and syntax won't change at all, but we're just specifying where we want to output those logs to. So I'll go ahead and save that. And then also within my Docker Compose file, We'll also need to add that as a volume. So I'm gonna go ahead and paste this in here so that we can actually mount that to the host system so that I can actually collect them via the Wazoo agent and send those into the stack. Uh, I do need to make sure my logs directory is created, which doesn't look like it is. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a make dir logs. I'll set out and make sure that created. Sure enough, it did. Uh, and now I'm ready to start back up Beelzebub. And let's look at the container logs. Compose logs, that's just follow. All right, we see that the service has started. If I go into my logs directory, I should, if I tail out the Beelzebub.log file, sure enough, we see some entries. Let me go ahead and try to connect, to have connected via SSH. And sure enough, we see the logging happening as expected. So what we also need to do though, is configure the agent to send those into the seam stack. So within Wazoo here, I'm gonna go ahead and log into Wazoo. I am going to go into my endpoint groups and I'm going to modify uh, whatever group I've got this agent configured to. Here, I've just got this assigned to group uh, Linux lab. So I'm gonna go ahead and open that up and I'm going to scroll into our local file section. And what I'm going to make is this entry here, which I'll include this in the blog post as well, so you guys can copy and paste. But all that we're doing is specifying the Wazoo agent, hey, we have a log format of type JSON, and the location is exactly what we specified within our config file for, for Beelzebub. So if you change that path, then of course, just change your path accordingly here. But now the Wazoo agent is going to collect those logs and send those to Wazoo. However, we're not done yet. We need to also create a detection rule to capture these events so that we can make sure Wazoo is logging on these. So if I go into our Wazoo rules repo here, you'll notice that we have a new folder here called Beelzebub. So you can just uh, copy the contents of this. This is just very basic. And actually, this does need to be built out on. You'll notice that the message here, it's only logging on SSH terminal sessions. So actually, none of my web traffic would be captured. So if you're looking to capture more than just SSH logs, you'll also need to, to add that in there. But 
you'll just take this role and add it into your Wazoo manager. And then once you restart your agent, and now what we'll start to see are the uh, SSH logs coming in, right? So here I'll see my command of who am I that I just ran. Uh, I can also just filter on this rule ID here. And I ran some of these, I think the other day, so I should have some more of these, show you guys. Here we see what's cool too, is that we're actually capturing the response from the model as well, which is really helpful because if I want to tune my prompt and play around with different prompts to provide the model with, um, we have a way to capture what output was, uh, was returned back to the user. So really helpful there. Um, and how is this log getting captured? Well, again, that is by our Wazoo rule. Here we're saying our field name is event.message. So event.message has to be equal to SSH terminal session interaction which sure enough is what we see here. Also, feel free to uh, contribute back to the, uh, to the Wazoo rules repository with whatever Wazoo rules you guys may come up with. Um, that would be helpful. Um, we're also collecting a remote address of the IP address that sent these commands in. So pretty cool. Uh, a nice, quick and easy way, a really simple honeypot to deploy, but very powerful because of how much customization you have, especially with these YAML files and how you can customize your own web pages. I'm really curious to see what some of you guys come, come up with. Also a fair warning to you guys, if you are planning on leveraging OpenAI's API key, do keep in mind that it will be using your API key credits, right? So if you expose this out to the wild and your honeypot's getting slammed with requests, well, that could lead to a very expensive a bill from OpenAI. So just a fair warning there if you are leveraging, planning on leveraging OpenAI's uh, API. So big shout out to these guys at uh, Belzebub. Again, hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. Apologies if I'm not. But a really cool and interesting project that you can deploy either within your internal networks to try to spot any malicious insiders, or you can expose it publicly to the internet to gather more intelligence around what attackers are probing for and what are they doing ultimately when they get onto your systems. So that's going to wrap it up for today's video. I appreciate your time and I will see you in the next one.